life as we know it has changed. Even though our plans, hopes and dreams were placed on hold, this game called life is still being played. There is no time out, half time or final whistle. It's changing, growing and evolving and so are you. It's not about being able to fulfill your dreams right now. It's about how hard you are willing to work to make them come true. And although we are apart, we are still playing a part together. Don't let the fear of missing the goal keep you from playing the game. So don't stop, play on. Good afternoon, players and coaches. I'm honored to once again be sharing this incredible program with you, except this time virtually. The past few months has been challenging for many of us, and I hope that you and your loved ones are healthy and safe. As you know, the Engine Knockout Challenge is a youth football development program, a program that we at Engine are extremely proud of. We have witnessed the program grow from a three-region tournament in 2003 to the national platform it is today. And with that, we are privileged to have witnessed so many amazing success stories and talented players move on to professional level. And not to mention our participants' growth, not just in sports, but holistically as individuals. A journey we are honored to be a part of. This year also marks a very special milestone for us as we launched the Engine Knockout Challenge for junior women. Supporting women on and off the field is an important pillar for Engine. And after many years of planning, we are proud to be able to open this long-standing tournament to our female counterparts. By hosting the webinars, we aim to highlight the nutrition, health and wellness that comes with being a sportsman or woman and cover topics that will equip players to make informed lifestyle decisions. Now, you might have seen her in the kitchen a few times, but this time she joins us in the locker room as she speaks to us about everything you need to know on healthy eating, balanced diets, and much more. She needs no introduction. It's Siba Mtongana, Sibalicious to us. Joining Sibam Tongana is Sean van Staden from Advanced Sports Training Academy, who will touch on all things wellness and physical well-being during play and for recovery. I hope that you have found our locker room sessions informative and valuable so far. The program was designed with you in mind, and we trust that it's been value-adding for you. We hope that even though you aren't on the field, it's been value-adding while you've been at home. I'd like to thank you for joining us on this journey and wish all of you success and health as you continue to reach your dreams. And remember, at Engine, you are number one. Thank you. And hello, boys and girls. Uh, thank you very much for joining us again for these Engine Locker Room sessions. It's so nice to say boys and girls because we're so used to hosting just boys at the Engine Knockout Challenge over the past 17 years. So it is wonderful for us to be joined by the ladies for the Engine Knockout Challenge going forward. And I'm glad that they're part of these sessions as we start them in our 2020. As I keep saying, we wish we were with you on the field of play again this year, like we've done in the past. But unfortunately, of course, because of the COVID-19 situation, we cannot be with you. But thank you to Engine for staying committed to youth football and for being the front runner when it comes to youth football that they've made sure that we have these sessions just to keep you informed and to keep you entertained and to make sure that we provide you with the necessary skills and the tools that you need in your journey to be a successful football player and uh, we are covering a lot of topics i mean we 
teaching you about life beyond football, which is a very important part of it. You have to start thinking about life beyond football as early as today. And you've heard from some of the guests that we've had over the past few weeks and some of the guests that we're going to have in the next few weeks, why it is important to think about life beyond football. Life skills also are very important because talent alone can only take you so far. There are a lot of elements that go into it uh, that, that are needed to make sure that you nurture your talent and you go as far as possible and you maximize your talent to the best of your ability. And today's session is also very, very important. And thank you to Engine for adding this uh, to the calendar because today we're going to talk about nutrition, we're going to talk about health, and we're going to talk about wellness. And I am joined by uh, two people here who are experienced in this field. And they will tell us all we need to know about why it's important to eat healthy, why it's important to eat at the right times and why it is important to also eat the right food. I know that last year uh, we had some boys running to the bathroom there because the stomach was running and I'm not sure what they'd eaten there but hopefully after today's session then we'll be able to know the right kind of food uh, to eat and why it's important and I think this session is going to be important not just for the players but also for the coaches uh, because coaches you are the ones that will guide these boys and girls you're the ones that remain with them in their communities or in the schools so it's important that we just start making sure that we instill uh, these elements and, and this kind of discipline as early as we can. So let me introduce my guests uh, today. Then on my left, I'll start with the lady. Um, yeah, looking lovely and beautiful and mm -hmm. bright and shining. Um, her name is Sivam Tonga and she is a nutritionist. She's also a food scientist and she's the founder of the Siva company. Welcome, Siva, and thank you very much for joining us on this Engine Knockout Challenge Seminars. Thank you for having me. I'm very excited. I'm very happy that my friends at Engine have a, have invited me. I, you know what's lovely? Um, it's the fact that we I'm speaking to women because when, when I talk to, you know, to sports uh, players, it's usually males. So <laughs> yes. I'm so happy speaking to females. Yes, we are. We are very happy to have the girls included in this Engine Knockout Challenge. Thanks again, um, Engine. It's very important. I've also got Sean van Staden here from ASP. ASP have been a wonderful addition to this Engine Knockout Challenge. I know how you guys love those ice baths or you love to hate those ice baths. And Sean van Staden is here. He's also a sports scientist. And he'll tell us why those ice baths are important and why recovery is important and conditioning and how to look after your injuries. Sean, thank you for joining us. As I mentioned, you've been a great addition to the engine knockout challenge i'm sure you've enjoyed working with us over the past few years yes it's been absolutely fun and uh, entertaining to see the guys jump into the ice baths and uh, and all those screens and shots and we know why they're important yeah. um but also thank you to engine and everybody at mcs sports um, and for you guys for having me and i'm looking forward and excited to share some knowledge which we can help the athletes take their performance and recovery to the next level um, and this is why i'm really excited what do you make of how they've embraced it though ever since you guys came on board so first year we had it's to introduce ice water and some of the, 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 the we, had, we had the engine tournament during a time where it was fairly cold <laughs> but even during cold you still need those ice bars and you still need to to make sure you get your recovery in um, we didn't have a very good uptake um, but when they get into the tubs we educate them on what's happening to their bodies why they need to do this and those players that were coming into the ranks uh, next year they were like, we're in there. We even had coaches wow. booking in advance to get in there. So yeah. now we have full adoption in all the provinces that we do the, the ice bars. And uh, we're proud of that because it just means that we know that they're going to recover for their next match, which is going to give them a better fighting chance, which will showcase their talent and give them a better opportunity to be, you know, to be seen by the scouts and, and players. So there you have it. That's the reason for the ice bath. You need to recover properly. And uh, we are welcoming your questions. You can send them right now. We'll get our panel to answer your questions at the end of this session. So make sure that you do take notes. There are prizes always to be given away at the end of each session. And make sure you do follow us on social media. It's engine.sa on Instagram. It's engine underscore SA on our Twitter and engine soccer on our Facebook. And we also have a couple of hashtags that you'll be seeing on the screen. Play a part or play a part. Uh, there's a play of of words there so make sure you use those hashtags and play it forward also those are some of the hashtags that we are using for this engine locker room seminars Siva, i'm gonna go back to you firstly maybe for those who are not familiar with what you do i'm sure some of them have seen you on tv uh, the girls and probably the boys too have seen you on tv uh, who is Siva, and what can you tell us about what you do all right so Siva i'm Tungana. first let me tell you where i hail i hail from the eastern cape m Dazane, so come from a township um, I, I, majority of people know me from See This Table, um, which is a show that is on Food Network and airs in over 135 countries. 
can translate in other five languages. So that's majority where people know me. But there's another Siba who went to school and studied uh, food and consumer sciences, where I majored in food science and in nutrition. So that's the core of what I do. And our course also had a culinary side to it. Um, so besides my qualifications, I've been in the industry for over 12 years. I look young, I know. <laughs> <laughs> look like you can play in the tournament next year. Uh, but I've been in the industry for, for a very long time. I have consulted um, for a number of clients, both from a nutrition and also a food uh, perspective. I have my own company called The Siba Company, where we do, you know, we respond to clients' needs. And this time, um, it was um, by engine who's asked me to come on board and be of help to young women who are um who are part of this most specifically i think the most important is uh, specifically for those who come from rural areas and for those who come from you know uh, spaces where they might not necessarily have that knowledge and to package it in a way that speaks to them as well so yes so so what does a food scientist do so food, so let me take you back. So we buy food from a retailer or a store. There are people who make that food, so it's us. So we are, the, we are consumer scientists. We are also food scientists. We come up with solutions as to what's the next phase that people ought to eat, whether from a commercial perspective, making money, obviously, or from from a you know improving people's health or improving um, or what whatever um, there is. Um, for instance, um, remember when we had dysteriosis or whenever we hit with a big food related <coughs> pandemic, um, we are there's a group of scientists who come together in the country who have to come up with a solution on how do we move forward. And they work very closely with government and sometimes with private sector in order to find solutions around that. And was part of those scientists. Who, uh, who came up with, with solutions, at least supporting them from a PR perspective in order to give people the correct information mm -hmm. so that people don't just, you know, now they're afraid of touching chicken or they're mm -hmm. afraid of, because there was a lot of misinformation. So part of my role as a food scientist and as a person um, you know, who, who, who has been in this um, career for a long time is to make sure that the information goes to the people and it's the right information. So they don't take small stompies mm -hmm. and make a big, you know, nothing out of, you know, big woo out, out of nothing. So that's okay. what we do. That's a good one. That's a good career food scientist, guys, because remember, we're also giving you career options uh, that you can look at while you are playing or after football. As we mentioned that we've got a session about life beyond football. So if you like your food or if you like eating healthy, food scientist is one you can also look at going forward. I think it's a first for many of us also. I didn't know that it was that specific, um, <laughs> this department. But let's talk about now why is it important to eat healthy for a player? It's important to eat healthy for a player because nutrition does play quite a vital role um, in a player's um, performance. Um, just similarly, that nutrition plays a very important role in, our, in, in me not necessarily being a player because it helps me to be at my best and optimal. You, you, you'd notice that um, if, if you don't eat um, healthy for an extended period of time, it starts to impact how you feel and, and how you feel then impacts your output. So those are very important things that can then be tied in very well to your output. So yeah, so I'll start there. And not just in, in sport, but just in life in general. Just in life in general. You know, just in life in general, it's very important that we eat healthy, we exercise, so at least they're already exercising because they're always <laughs> on the field. In South Africa, we've got we one of the countries, specifically in the SADC region, we're number one when it comes to obesity um, in the country and overweight and obesity. So it's very important that people know what, what, what to eat and how to eat it, what portion sizes they need to eat them and, 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 all, the, all, and all of that. And what's nice, um, it, what's lovely with having to eat well is, is, is the fact that we are then able to prevent uh, you know, you're, you're able to prevent from having certain diseases. You know, we've got silent killer diseases like diabetes, which, I mean, I'm, I, you know, as a person of color, as a black person, my mom was diabetic, my dad has high blood pressure. This is norm in our society, and this is majorly influenced by what we take in. So if we can, you know, watch what we eat or learn how to eat better in order to help ourselves um, to, to be fine and to be healthy, then we've done majority of, of, of 
the job and even with women often who want to lose weight are now buy, buying off but it's women so you know maybe it will come <laughs> handy at some point and women would like to lose weight they all you know people will say i'm exercising but i'm not losing weight you know i'm doing this etc so i always say that the, the bulk of it is in the kitchen mm. is in what we put in because it doesn't really help you for you to you know, to be exercising and doing all of that if you're not eating well. Um, and of course, there are other factors like your hormones and your genetics and your whatnot, which then affects, affects um, how, how, how we are or, or your weight loss. But beyond that, under norm and under general, it's because um, we're not eating well enough. And by just eating well, you have done, I think, 80% of the job. And 80% it's quite a lot by just limiting what we eat. And sometimes it's also about portion control. Um, how much pap must we have? You know, how much nyama must we have? How much meat must we have? How much vegetables must we have? How much this must we have? How, if we are celebrating or having a cake. And my approach to food is very holistic. I'm not saying that people can't touch sweets. They can't eat this at all. I'm saying in moderation. You can have all those things in moderation. And also you need to understand the hierarchy of what is important for you, which I'm going to get to um, just now. So for instance, it's very important for you to have carbs, especially as a sports person, I'm getting more into sports. Sure. Very important for them to have enough carbohydrates in their body because that's the instant energy that is needed. Not, but not just any kind of carbohydrates. You need carbohydrates that is also able to be released um, systematically and it's measured. Um, in your body. So instead of, for instance, eating bread or cake or um, or any in any other uh, carb, which then gives you the energy immediately, and then it crushes you and you are completely fatigued and you want to sleep, then come, you know, eat other options which are healthier, where it will sustain your energy and it really helps. Uh, it's been proven that they help with uh, performance. And uh, you know, the beauty about si you know food science and just science around food. <coughs> Um, wellness and nutrition is that the studies are constant where they really try to optimize to optimize um, specifically specifically in this case in sports uh, in our performance along with um, our nutrition so must I go on no uh, before you go on I just want to make sure that we are all on the same page here yeah? and uh, just for the benefit of me and okay. I'm sure some of the players what exactly do you mean by carbohydrates? What are carbohydrates? Okay. What are carbohydrates? Are carbs. <laughs> so carbohydrates are, it's food that we eat, which instantly give us energy. So one of those foods, potatoes are carbs, rice are carbs, um, pasta is carbohydrates, bread is carbohydrates. What else? And, and you know, you also find it in many other foods beyond the main carbs. For instance, you also find carbohydrates in butternut, in sweet potato, in uh, in fruits, etc. But obviously, it measures up. You get potatoes has far more uh, carbs than, for instance, a carrot or a or another food. So you'd find that some, uh, you know, food in general will have a certain level of carbs, but it's just a varying degree. So for a sportsman, it's very important that they have enough carbs. Actually, their diet should be 60 to 65 percent carbohydrates. Um, and then, I, so that's that. Is, is that? Yes, no, I, I think that? that's clear. Yes. I think that's clear enough. So I'm just going to take it a little bit further. So not just only carbohydrates. So it's very important to also have the good kind of carbohydrates. So instead of just having isonge simsho uh, or white bread, then have a more wholesome bread, like a whole wheat bread, because that then helps you with your glycemic index. But I don't want to get too deep yeah. in one day, in one session, because nutrition can get can get there. So you want to get food that, you know, food that's not, that, that you're not going to, to get. It gives you all the energy and you're like, rah, 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 sugar rush. That's why mm -hmm. we don't get You lose that energy immediately. You, you know, you go, rah, 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 <laughs> and then yeah. you just you know, tired and, and, and want to sleep after that. So you don't want that. So you need food that give you systematic, it releases the energy in your blood, um, you know, systematically, if, if I may call it that. So that's that. So brown, like for instance, go for brown pasta, brown sugar, wild rice, um, good quality uh, good quality braids. And to be, to, to be honest, there is a slight price difference, which is the frustration often we get when it comes to when we advise people to eat healthy. And the frustration is that it does cost a little bit more. It does. It, 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 
you know, we, we often say there's ways around it, etc. But if you were to really put the costs between the two, it tends to be slightly more. But there are ways in which people can still eat healthy without really, you know, uh, uh, um, being so affected in their pocket. So carbs, take, can I move? Yes, one. you can move carbs. <laughs> I'm going to ask a question about how you spell carbs, guys, and glycemia. The glycemic, glycemic, index. glycemic index. That's another word of the day here. So let's hope that your English teacher is teaching you the right things. We'll see after this session. But that's a good one. That's a good one because healthy and you eat the right way, 80% of the job is done. And it's similar to what Coach Pizzo Musumana told us in one of our first episodes where he said that talent alone is just 20% of it. The other 80% are all the various elements that come into it. So it actually does add up here. Sean, I'm sure you'd agree also that, I mean, talent alone is a certain a percentage or aspect of it. How crucial then is recovery and conditioning when it comes to sports? Um, so recovery is, is very, very important. You know, I think... What has happened in, uh, in the last couple, five to six years, that everyone's focusing on the performance side, mm -hmm. but they're focusing very little on the recovery side. And I think Engine saw this opportunity whereby they wanted to introduce this idea that look after your body, it'll become a vehicle for you for longevity. Mm -hmm. I started ASB Sports Science because I added volume to training because I was told I needed to really push hard, I needed to put the hours in, so I put the hours in but I got hurt, an operation on my knees and the doctor said I'll never play sport again. I did prove him on in later years, but also I had a mother that said, you will go study sport. I don't know how, what the sport was, <laughs> but you will go study. And then I studied sports psychology and I went in, I found a passion for it. And then I went into sports science. And then I asked the question, I said, where were the sports scientists when I was growing up? You know, where were the, the high quality coaches? Why did I have to get the old boy that was coaching me football when I was growing up instead of someone that would instill knowledge and, and guide me and assess me and, and take me to that next level? So I said, flip the model upside down. Why do I have to become a pro in order to, to have the very best? Why can't I give a six-year-old, an eight-year-old, an 18-year-old the very best of sports science? And that was the journey of, of, of ASP Sports Science. We giving athletes the tools to, to empower them so they have a longevity in career because there's nothing worse than putting all that effort in and it's, it's cut short. Mm -hmm. And nutrition is a very good indicator that if you have poor nutrition, you have a higher risk of injury. Mm -hmm. So if you, you're not doing the right things, and yes, it might be a little bit more expensive, but because of the, the complexity of the carbohydrates, you don't have to have as much. So mm -hmm. therefore it can last you longer. Which so these these things that you can play with. Mm -hmm. So recovery is the, I think one of the most important things that an athlete can introduce. But it's not waking up when my legs are sore and then, oh, I need to recover. Yeah. Or my coach killed me at session today. I need to focus on recovery. It's, it's the mantra. It's the mantra of I wake up, I do my mobility training, I do my core training as I get out of bed. I hit the shower, I have my good breakfast to start the day off on a positive note. It's all those little things that you do. And as you mess with pizza, it's not just rocking up at a training session for two hours and say, well, I'm going to become a pro one day. It doesn't work like that. It's all those micro segments that you're doing in the day that allow you, on, put you on a path to success. And recovery is part of that. That's an interesting one. So you're saying that it's better to start now because some will say, but I'm not playing professionally. I'm going to wait until I get to a professional level and then I can start looking after my body. So the easiest way to, 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 to categorize it Everybody is, is, is training two to three times a week with their coach for two hours, right? So you become part of the norm. Everyone's doing it. Then your talent stands out that you are doing something better because you are, you are genetically better or I'm a little bit more talented in this aspect. But you've got to do things differently. If you want to stand out from the crowd and be somebody, you've got to go against the grain. You've got to put in the extra work. And that extra work, you can't rely on your coaches because they've got a team to look after. They've got their own lives. They, they, they work full day. And then they come and coach. So they don't have that all their time to spend with you. So you have to have this, this mindset of what else can I do to, to take me on this journey to become a professional athlete. And it starts with you. All right. It has to be, I want this. And then the question is, what do I need to do? So tidbits like nutrition, sports science, recovery, you've got to take this with two hands, say, wow, I want more information. And from that, you say, okay, I've learned this, and I keep moving on that journey. But you have to become, as part of your mantra. I'll give you a typical example. Um, Ronaldo, uh, Ronaldo, typically Ronaldo, I think one of the best athletes in the world. Um, he doesn't drink, he's got a clean lifestyle. All right. He has access to all the sports scientists in the world, all the best coaches in the world, all the best, you know, training tools, right? But what does he do when you follow him on Instagram? 
He goes home, you see him cycling, you see him jogging, he's got his kid doing sit-ups and abs. Why does the, the, the one of the best players in the world have to do all those extra things when he's got all the best coaches? Because it starts with him. He goes home, puts in his work, he went to, he took a trip to Dubai. What did he do at 12 o'clock at night? He was jogging because he did not have time because he was on a plane. So he made sure he put in his time, no matter what time it was, he put in the effort and work. Okay, that's a great example there of somebody that I'm sure we can all relate uh, to Cristiano Ronaldo. You mentioned injuries also, and unfortunately, um, injury is just one of the most unfortunate aspects of the beautiful game, but it is part of the game. Are injuries avoidable, and how does one go about trying to avoid injuries or trying to manage the injuries? Because I've seen the heartbreak, first game of the tournament, you get injured, you don't know if you'll play again, some make it towards the, the business end of the tournament, but some teams get knocked out early, and your team doesn't make it, and then wonder now what happens now i think it's a two part two part um answer the first part is if you're looking after your body on a consistent daily basis your severity of injury is going to be less i cannot sit here and promise you'll never get injured mm -hmm. but if i am doing my flexibility training at home making sure that every day i'm making sure i have, I have more supple hamstrings you know my calves on time because i'm putting in the training i'm very stiff but I, if i focus on that flexibility Mobility is range of motion in the hip joints. If I focus on that, um, those little things that you do every day add to the less severe. You know, in a tournament, it's a contact sport. You're going to get hurt, you're going to get injured, but it's what you do when you get that injury. It's like, oh, just sit on the side and just, you know, we'll wrap, wrap you with a bandage, you go home and you, you let that wound heal. Give it a magic water. <laughs> yeah, exactly, <laughs> magic water. You know, many times I've heard that. <laughs> so, it's what you do with that injury. You've got to get that expert advice, and it doesn't mean you have to pay for it. You have to ask the right questions. Ask your coach to ask a friend that knows someone, all right? Reach out to ASP and say, I've got this injury. What can I do, all right? From a nutrition point of view, because that helps to repair those, those knitted uh, or torn muscles, and then from how do I get back into the game? Most guys get injured, go back into play, and they tear the same area or an adjacent area because it hasn't knitted properly, it's weak, it hasn't, they haven't trained, they just want to get back and play. So injuries um, is manageable, um, but as you get those battle scars, it affects you later on in life. So the earlier you start with managing those, those injuries and, and, and battle scars, the better you have a chance of less injuries later on in your career. And some teams will say, we don't have a physio, um, and I'll make reference again to Coach Pizza because he also mentioned this, that he's had to equip himself now to understand at least um, the, the, the physical side of things, to understand the nutrition side of it, to understand that if a player goes down with a knee injury, at least he's got an idea of what the injury is and how long the player will be out for. How important, or is it important also for the coaches then to empower themselves just to make sure they understand this side of the game? Yeah. Um, so Pizzo is, is, is a very special character and I think one of the, the best, if not the best coach in South Africa at the moment. Yeah. Um, and I've worked with him in the past. It's because his mindset is, just because he's the coach doesn't mean he's not willing to want to learn. And he's constantly looking at different areas and constantly challenging the way things should be done. It's not to say that he's the coach, he knows it all. He's asking the right questions. And yes, he does not have to know the science of what I do, but he has to authorize questions because it affects his players. Mm -hmm. And his job is to improve. And nutrition, it's like they feed their players. Why? Because it, they can't rely on them to go home and eat what they want to eat, or in the steaks and pizzas and stuff like that. They make sure that the nutrition is sorted. When they leave there, he knows he's done his job. All right, then it's the responsibility um, of that athlete. Siba, does the same go goes uh, when it comes to nutrition, maybe for the coaches also just to be aware of this right kind of foods that we've mentioned or, or what to put into an athlete's body? Is it important or do you just leave it to the player? It's, you, you know, it's exactly like parenting. It is my responsibility as a parent to make sure that I raise my children well. Um, because often the children don't know any better at, at, at a certain point, at least of their lives, until they grow and they're able to have access to information and access to all those things. So I see the, the role of a coach almost like a parenting role because they're the ones who make sure that you know they get the best out of, out of the, um, the players. So, you know, it, it's crucial for me. Let, me. let me make a very silly example. I'm a mother. Um, you know, my, my, my children don't yet have phones. They're still very young. We've restricted that. But the minute they get phones, I need to make sure that I know all the buttons to block certain things, etc. Because, because at the end of the day, he's my, 
that my kids are my responsibility. So I almost feel that coaches need to take that responsibility, of which I think that that's what they do. That's why um, um, Jacques is saying that, you know, Coach Pizzo uh, would be calling this person and wanting more information and, 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 and all of that because they, re they take that responsibility on them. And often, um, perhaps players don't necessarily have access to... The, the worst thing is not knowing what to do Yes. That's the worst thing. So because at least the coaches have access to different people, they then can engage with, the, with those people in order to help their people. It's, it's exactly the same thing. Um, um, also, I'm um, responding to what, what Jacques said earlier on, uh, which is answering your question as to when do you start. It's the same with nutrition. We know from a nutritional um, uh, perspective that that's why we, we, we always say it's better for parents for women to what is Ngaisa in English to breastfeed, breastfeed. <laughs> you know to breastfeed their children. That's the best nutrition a child will ever get, and that sets them up up not only for then when 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 they are young, but for later on because they have less chances of getting certain diseases simply because they were breastfed. So it can't be something that starts at a later stage. It has to be something. That starts when you are when when you are younger. The same will be in terms of nutrition. Um, you know, uh, you know, studies now um show that that between the period of uh, from uh, infancy to two years, that's the period where you have to spend a lot of time with your child intuitively, not intuitively, um, uh, cognitively, and many other things to make sure that they eat well, they do this, they do. So, it, what I'm trying to say is, it can't be too early to yeah. start. You know, you, you can't start too early, and because you have started early, and you, you know, it then helps you, not not only it, it helps you get into food that you wouldn't normally eat quicker. You know, you know, majority of people, for instance, they don't like vegetables. You know, and it's just something you need to get over. Yes. <laughs> you must eat the vegetables because those are are your micronutrients. You need the vitamins and the and the minerals in order for you to um, to be fine. And unless if you're willing to pay. For the synthetic version, which is which are the pills, which is which are expensive, which I wouldn't recommend unless if really you are in a situation in that situation. So yeah. So eat your vegetables. I think that's the veg. lesson. Eat, eat your, your vegetables. Food. Listen to your parents. Sean mentioned something um, very interesting. Well, we spoke about the pros and the cons with Sean. And when I asked you earlier, why is it important to eat well? Some will say seeing is believing. What happens if you don't eat well? Sports specifically or in general? Or in general and in sports. I mean, look at our society. We've got um, you know, non -communicable, uh, communicable diseases like um, diabetes, high blood pressure, which if they were treated with good quality food earlier on would be fine. Osteoporosis. Um, osteoporosis is a, is a weakening of um, our bones. And it, often, it only hits us when we're much older, but it's something that can be done to prevent it when we're much earlier so basically what happens is our body if we're not eating enough calcium our body provides for itself the body is such a you know we've been created in such a believe in creation we've been created in such a beautiful way that you know the body is able to take care of yourself and for instance if you're not taking enough calcium so your body taps itself it goes it taps it in order to release the calcium for it to function so if you haven't been eating enough calcium for a very long time, suddenly one time you fall and then you know you, you, you break your bones. And it's not that you are fragile, but it's such that you have not taken care of yourself when it comes to it comes to a specific nutrient, which is calcium at this point. So you know it's 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 food is complex, <laughs> uh, and food is medicine, and we have to get to a point where our food becomes medicine. And uh, you know, if if I were to think back. To where my grandparents, what my grandparents used to eat, they planted their own food. You know, that was organic, straight from the garden, and then they would eat that. Hardly eat as much meat, even though they had livestock and they had everything, they didn't eat as much as we do uh, in terms of red meat specifically, um, and, and all those things. So I would say it's very important that even, you know, we live in a very high pressured lifestyle, and we can always go to a um, a specific, I almost dropped a name. Uh, you, you can always go to a place to go buy a burger, you go buy a whatever, instead of us cooking the food in which we eat. And often there are things in, in the food in which we buy which we do not even uh, know about or would never add uh, into our food. So those things are also important. And where do we find the calcium that you mentioned? Oh, milk. Milk, that's <laughs> so where milk, it is. So milk, not just milk. It's not just milk, you find it in seeds. You find calcium. 
um, in seeds as well. In fact, um, seeds have more calcium in comparison um, to having it with milk, but we've been conditioned to only have it um, with milk. But uh, it makes sense because milk is more easily accessible and something that people will most likely eat in comparison to seeds. So milk, your yogurts, um, you know, your low-fat cheeses, and, and, and you know, your dairy products, okay. you get it from that. And then, is there a right time to eat? Let's say we've got a final, it starts at 3, it's the Engine Knocker Challenge final of 2021. When do I eat? All right, it's a very big question and there's different schools of thought for it, depending on the sports in which it is and also depending on the on, on how you respond to certain things. So it's something that one will have to speak to. You almost have to speak to a physician uh, about it and for them to make the recommendation for you but um, in under G under general there's specific guidelines that are given for sportsmen specifically for soccer or any sport that is very similar to soccer and one of them is um, it is far better to eat three hours before time okay three hours before time and it has to be you know not just carbs but um, a holistic meal and what then happens is that especially if you're going to be nervous uh, going into a game or you're going to be stressed going into a game because stress also affects how we digest food so if you've done it much earlier you've given your body enough time for all the food that you've eaten to be nicely absorbed and just digested into our body otherwise you'll have butterflies and start running As, to the bathroom <laughs> you might because that's a that is a natural reaction when we do have butterflies a natural reaction is that we need we need you know the small yeah. room um so and then uh you know there's also studies to say that within so say you didn't you didn't eat three hours before let's say you did it two hours before but try not to eat within the hour okay within uh, before that you hour, play before you play or and rather what you then do is you <clears> rather <throat> have kicks of um of you rather have kicks and you, you take a, a sports drink five or ten minutes before because that will then give you that beautiful boost for you to have to, to start the game and then there's uh, you know there's suggestions even when it comes to when you are playing uh, not when you are playing, can't. <laughs> you, unless if you are running, you can drink every twenty minutes if it is a run. But if it is a sport, in sports like soccer, um, if it is break time, make sure that you 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 rehydrate and then you also um, drink your your sports drinks um, mm -hmm. as well. And then beyond that, for a very long time, you know, from a for a scientific uh, point of view, there's been. Um, uh, you know, everybody knew that you have to eat within the first two hours uh, in order to replenish. And there, you don't eat food that is uh, that will help you um, sustain the energy. You want something that's going to be, you know, uh, give you instant energy because you've released so much energy. So that that you can have a banana. Okay. <laughs> you can have a banana because bananas are very <clears throat> fast energy. They give they give your body an instant fuel. Um, there you can have you know a fruit juice. There you can have you know things like that. And those are all things that help you with replenishment um, of your uh, replenishment before you, you play uh, the game. Now there's two things if I'd like to um, explain uh, within this. If you are, for instance, going to play a game immediately. Um, after then you definitely need to eat a banana or definitely need to eat something within that two hours but if you're going to play tomorrow or two weeks time or in, in next week or, or we're going to train um, obviously not next week yeah. but you know, on, on another day then it's not as necessary because you'll have enough time to replenish and to recover with a normal maybe late a late snack uh, even beyond that two hours so players need to know uh, obviously consider their schedule yeah. as well okay that's a good one because we know at the engine knocker challenge we've got back-to-back -back matches you play at nine you play at 11 you play at three so i hope you've paid attention to what siva had to say on that note siva there'll be a question that will come that says our game is at nine does it mean i must hit at six in the morning flexibility that's why it's better for instance to then speak with certain you know to speak with certain people who can then advise you according to your body um, your body and what, for instance, if you then, let's say you eat an hour, an hour, 30 minutes before, how will your body then react to it? Okay. We are, we do have specialists that specialize on that, but I do also understand that not everybody has access um, to that. So we usually give like a generic um, 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 feel when it comes to that. 
Okay, that makes sense. Sean, nutrition is obviously a big part of, of, of what you guys do also as ASP. We've seen some of the coaches actually on the right track. I've seen them carrying bags of bananas and oranges at the <laughs> games, and then they'll give the boys a banana or an orange or two. Um, are they doing the right thing? And, and from your side, I mean, what can you talk to us about nutrition? Okay. Um, so hi hydration um, is, is an important part of, of the game. And uh, it's when we say hydration, it doesn't mean purely I'm just drinking water. Because I'm drinking lots of water, I'm being hydrated. Water doesn't have all the, the minerals needed or the electrolytes needed Electrolyte. to replenish, right? So pre-game, post-game, you have to get electrolytes. Yes, water is important, but also electrolytes. And what are electrolytes? It takes calcium, it's chloride, it's uh, magnesium, um, and phosphorus. And phosphorus. Yes. So it's all these, these electromagnetic things that are in your body that causes a chemical reaction to allow the absorption of these substances into your body. So often what happens is athletes get cramps, and we see a lot of cramps. Mm. And there you are massaging, massaging, but it doesn't release. Why does it release? Because it's missing those nutrients, right? So what coaches need to understand is, if you're gonna be playing in a, in a tournament, now remember, a tournament, multi-games is, is abnormal behavior. They're not used to that competitive, the high intensity, and so forth. So their bodies are releasing too much, but not getting enough in. So I've seen over the years coaches running around with little bags of salt and like these uh, <laughs> are chewing salt and I'm like, no, because no, they think, and also bananas, just eat your bananas. I'm like, yes, a banana is, is part of the puzzle. Mm -hmm. Salt is part of the puzzle, but you need all those other nutrients. Mm -hmm. So um, there's a lot of research around chocolate milk, a low mm -hmm. fat chocolate milk. Prefer high, you know, high fat depending on your time of game because of the, the time of digestion. But it gives you those nutrients. It gives you that calcium for replenishment and it starts to repair process. So coaches should be looking at buying a two liter milk, putting a bit of cocoa powder, powder in okay, yes. for antioxidants because your cells are under a lot of stress and pressure. Mm -hmm. So the antioxidants will help also, you know, um, get it back to where it's supposed to be. And then it allows that, that athlete to recover better. It still might not necessarily, because we're all different, might not necessarily solve the cramp issue because yeah. it might have been hydration, fatigue, weather, um, the previous night's meal, the previous week's meals, all those things that are in the, but you can give them the best fighting chance by making sure that post game, they, they are recovering properly mm -hmm. in that sense. So yeah, hydration is important, nutrients, uh, um, uh, electrolytes are important, and it doesn't mean those cheap sugary drinks, because sugar, yes, it plays an important role at high intensity, but too much sugar causes the crash. Yes. Then the coach tries to give the player information, do this, do that, and his brain is almost clouded, and he's almost looking at the stars. He doesn't listen. It's because his body is not registering, because of the sugar rush. You mentioned the causes of cramps there. Maybe if you can just repeat it because I always thought that cramps is just because you didn't exercise properly before the game. <laughs> so, <laughs> <Take notes. laughs> so, yeah, so if the athlete is unfit, he has a higher risk of cramping because the muscle just says, <clears throat> your body says, nobody, I can't, I can't anymore, mm -hmm. stop. Cramp, lie down, all right, because your body tells you to stop. And then you fight through it, and then that's when you get injuries. Um, but, for instance, foods that we were talking about that give you those nutrients as well, We've got bananas, which gives you the potassium. Sweet potato and pumpkin, which is potassium, calcium, magnesium. You got avos, which has twice the amount of potassium, bananas, uh, and then sweet, uh, then bananas and sweet potato. Beans and lentils, high in fiber. So for the female athletes that have cramps um, in, in certain times of the month, that helps to reduce the cramps in that sense. Um, snack on melons, all right, that has the source of potassium and calcium. Full cream milk, pickle juice. Secret remedy, if you've got a cramp, get to a local spa and buy, just drink the pickle juice with, of course, mustard seed because the mustard seed helps with the inflammation. Inflammation is the swelling of that muscle because it's so tight now, releases it. The pickle juice kickstarts the chemical processes for the absorption and all your other stuff that goes in. And, of course, a handful of mixed nuts, but it's got to be at least two to three hours before because of the digestion process. So it's nutri um, nutrition and eating your vegetables is, is incredibly important, but change your focus of what is on my plate. Oh, it's vegetables, I don't wanna eat vegetables. But when I, as an athlete, I know that these are the nutrients that I need in order to have a good game, in order to be scouted, in order to get to my next goal, which is professionalism, all right? So why would I not eat that spinach? Why would I not eat that pumpkin? Yes, I don't like it, and I look at my plate, but I know it's so good for me, and from a performance point of view, and a recovery and an injury prevention point of view, I'm going to eat that. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, that's interesting. No, what's on your plate then? Good one. And Siva, you've been nodding with everything that Sean uh, from ASP has been saying. From from your side, I mean, what then? I know that you've uh, prepared some slides for us and yes. we've got some pictures that we'll show here where you've actually prepared your own food. Yes. What, what kind of foods then do we eat pre and post a game? What okay. kind of food would you advise? So I think I've covered the pre and uh, post the game, okay. but I'd like to talk about food in general. Okay. Um, when it comes to players, what what kind of food do you eat? Yes. Now you've done that. You know you you finished with the game. How how do you maintain? Because that in essence is very is what we are talking about. I'm nodding because I love science. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm enjoying, keep adding the potassium. I'm actually enjoying it. Yes, sorry, <laughs> I'm actually enjoying it. I'm like yeah 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 yes 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 yes, yes. okay. Perfect. So in, in terms of food in general, and I think this one is specifically for, you know, um, uh, people who come from, who, who can't necessarily afford to buy a salmon, which has, um, a, a salmon which has omega-3s, which is very good, uh, you know, for us, and it's got selenium and all these uh, other beautiful things. Mm. But I want to give options of what that could be, and that would be mackerel. So mackerel it is, is another type of fish that gives you the um, um, omega threes, but a fraction of the price. Mm -hmm. And you know what else? No. It will chat. <laughs> <laughs> and we grew up with that. Did them go in? <laughs> that, that's why he's cooking so much pilchard. That it's, makes sense. Yes. So I don't want to comment on Tito's food. <laughs> anyway, um, so it's uh, you know pilchard because that gives you you know such high quality. Um, uh, um, nutrients, okay. but it's such an easy, uh, accessible thing that we grew up with. Beans, for in, for instance, I've got. Oh, I want to show you recipes. I want to show you recipes. That's fine. They'll see them on the so screen. So I, I make, for instance, a bean stew, and then I add my pilchards in there, and I've hit two birds with one stone. Obviously, the uh, uh, nice proteins uh, with that, but beans also gives me some carbs and also gives me some uh, some proteins um, mm -hmm. as well. And um, with some tomato in, in a tomato radish, it is to in as mm -hmm. you would call it. And not only that, but you can also make fish cakes. You can also make um, many other stuff, you know, which I will share um, with you. And let's talk about food preparation. Now you are. So this is this is me. There's the food scientist, and then there's the yeah. chef, which is the, the the preparation of the food. Now, in terms of food preparation, if you are going to eat meat, because protein is also a very good part of of your meal. So I said um, six, sixty to sixty five percent must be carbohydrates. Uh, twenty to twenty five percent must be fat, but it must be under thirty percent, and then the rest must be carbohydrates. Mm -hmm. Not sorry, uh, protein. The rest must be protein. Now, if you're going to cook meat, of which we are a meat-loving nation, and we are meat-loving people, uh, especially if you are a Bantu uh, people. Um, so, you know, if you are going to cook meat, how do you cook it? Then uh, remove the fat before you cook it, because that then helps um, you not to eat the wrong type of types of fats. There are good types of fats, and there are bad types of fats. The good types of fats are the, uh, are the unsaturated fats which are your olive oils, um, 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 uh, fats you get from avocado, uh, fats you get from nuts, but they must not be roasted. So you mustn't roast your nuts mm -hmm. uh, before you cook them, or it mustn't be toasted. Because the minute you toast them, you, you remove the beauty of them. It now becomes a saturated fat. You know, so it's such a small, intrinsic meth uh, cooking method that can change and transform the food from it being good to what, what is not good. Uh, specifically when it comes to fats. And then there is, what else? So trim the fat before you cook it, um, uh, you know, but then at the same time, from a food perspective, we want the fat in because fat gives the flavor. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's not, it's better if you trim it. And if you still have fat um, in your stew, uh, then make sure that you skim it off so that you don't eat too much of the wrong fat. And then, um, what else is there? I can't, I can't, overemphasize fruits and vegetables because that's where you get all your you know there's macro nutrients which are the big ones protein um, uh, carbohydrates and, um, and and fat and then there's micronutrients which you get from 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 your vegetables and you know I, I you know very important uh, we spoke about it earlier is having to sleep 
uh, resting is, is quite important. And there's also nothing but, you know, you can have the best food, you can have the best everything, but if you're not motivated, so I'm also agreeing with John, yeah. because if you're not motivated, I mean, I watched a documentary the other day by, um, who's the greatest basketball player, um, Michael Jordan, Jordan, they will tell you. Jordan, you know, baby. Oh my goodness. You know, I was so, The last dance. Oh, uh. it, it was just so incredible. You know you know what, what some of his uh, 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 colleagues said about him, who used to play with him? They said it's almost as if it is God disguised in a man. You know, but it's like his dedication. It speaks to what Jacques is talking about. It's his dedication. He was so dedicated. He was self-motivated in order to, to you know, to, to achieve the success in which he wanted. He, 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 it's just incredible to see. So you can get all these things, but in essence, you have to be the one who is inquisitive. You have to be the one who puts in the time. You have to be the one who puts it. And that goes through in, in, in everything. You know, it goes through my career. I've had to put the time in order for me to have the knowledge. I've had to put the time in order for me to have my business. And I continue to keep the time. It goes to anything. So you have to put the time because without you putting the time, putting the, the training in, then it's almost like you are, you, 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 you're you not amplifying what you would naturally have. But you need to do it the right way. So you don't get injured. So you don't um, do that. So, yeah. Okay. Sean, you mentioned sleeping. And I know you guys at ASP always talk about sleeping. Why is sleeping so important or sleeping at the right time, I guess, or sleeping early? Perfect. It's just, when, I, when I'm speaking to my coach, I can't sleep during the day. It's going to be after hours. <laughs> but it's important. I think sleep, remember, we're giving you advice. On, we're giving the athletes advice on, you know, what are some of the things they can do at home that can have the biggest impact. And I'm not going to share with you the smaller impacts because only when you're an elite athlete, and you're doing everything right, then you look for those tiny little nuances. But the big things can have big performance is sleep. All right, why do we need to sleep? So when when you when you rest and you sleep, your body starts to repair. Okay. Provided I had good nutritional meal, mm. all right, I'm sleeping, my mind shuts down because the whole day has been stressed. I didn't have a good practice session. I've got a match coming up. There's a tournament. My girlfriend's fighting with me. I just need to calm down go for a sleep, all right, um, I reset my brain, my body starts to repair all those. Because remember, when you exercise, your, your marble fibrils, which is this, this, when I contract my bicep, your, your, your muscles go in and like little spindles. And then they tear and bleed, and that's what causes that pump and that swelling. Yeah. And then they repair and they get bigger. And then my biceps get bigger, my legs get bigger, and they tear and bleed, and that's what happens. So I need to be able to repair. So when I repair, I rest, and those repair quicker, all right. Now I've eaten nicely, so when I'm sleeping, it only has to focus on the repair process. It doesn't have to focus on me walking, jogging, moving. It's just repairing. So mm. sleep becomes very, very important. Um, so I'll give you a quick research article which I, which I wrote about is that from a coaching perspective, coaches, please listen up. Um, uh, there's a part of your brain, all right, when you sleep deprived, there was a research done with just one day less sleep, all right? Um, the amygdala is responsible for your emotional behavioral state. Mm. So sometimes, all right, Sean has an emotional, like he's just, he's too emotional. You're like, and you sit back an hour later, you're like, that's, that's out of character. It's not normally me, all right? Mm -hmm. Then I reflect back and I think, all right, my kids kept me up. They raided my bed. I've, woke, I've woken up six, seven times at night, maybe like 16 times, all right? And I didn't have a good night's rest. Yeah. Therefore, my emotional estate is heightened. So the amygdala, the research says that it actually severs the part where the information from your prefrontal cortex, I'm getting technical, but just understand, the front of your brain, your attention, your focus, I need to score the goal, I need to listen to the coach, it sends a signal through. But now that relationship is severed. It says, I'm not listening, buddy, all right, because I just want to do what I want to do, all right? Then the coach says, come on, work harder. And you just throw this tantrum, all right, because, you know, it's, it's the emotional state takes over, right? Um, so the coach is trying to relay positive information or important information. Your emotional state is heightened. The guy comes in for a tackle and you get up and you're about to do something. Uh, that could lead you to a red card. It could lead you to a yellow card. So that simple piece of advice by getting eight to nine hours sleep a day reduces. It connects the prefrontal cortex back to that area. It's less heightened. Therefore, you're going to have a better emotional game. Your chances are not playing that final reduce because you've had a good night's rest. So from an injury prevention point of view, definitely. From an emotional state point of view, great. 
from a coaching point of view, I need to relay information as a coach back to you so you can pass and do what you need to do. You're more responsive and your attention to what you need to do as your as your job, all right, is, is focused. So that's why sleep is incredibly important. And there's a whole host of other things as well. That's a very good one. That's a very good one. I hope you've taken notes, boys. And you know, what else is important so that we can all... Girls. And girls, of course. <laughs> That's why we have her here to remind us that the engine knockout challenge is inclusive. We're going to get used to that. Don't worry. We're so happy to have you here. Girls. And now, boys and girls, on that note, it's also very important to sanitize. Because <laughs> we want to see you on the field of play next year. And even though we've moved to level one, we can only return to the field of play if we follow the government protocols and we wear our masks and sanitize and sleep early. So it's important to make sure that we do the right thing. So please, let's, let's, let's do the right things. Um, Sean, just back to you. I also saw, um, when we were talking before the session, you mentioned breathing techniques. Yeah. How you must, what does that even mean? Like, do you have to, how else can you <laughs> breathe than the normal way of breathing? <laughs> so... The, uh, it just came to mind, but um, when you go to Lamar's classes and that, it, it's and they teach you to breathe. It's 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 a, there's a reason for it. It's not just to go, <laughs> all right. It's to de-stress, all right, yes. by bringing in more oxygen into the body. So you're on the field. You just played your third. You're about to play your third game. Um, your muscles are tired. I don't care who you are. Your muscles will be tired. Mm. Even if you put in all the best nutrition, if the absorption rate is not going to be as great because your muscles are fatigued. Remember, it's, it's, it's tired and it's going to take longer to get those nutrients in, but you had them, that's great. Um, so it's important to remember that to breathe, so the lactic acid builds up in your muscles. So there's a chemical reaction. Every time I move, there's a chemical reaction happening in my body and then I get reduction in oxygen. All right. Why do I need oxygen? Oxygen produces ATP, adenotrisphosphate, which think about that short little burst. Then think about your cell needs to re-energize, like your, your video games, the power bar, it actually just goes back to normal, then I can sprint again. So the rule of thumb is for every 10 meters sprinted, it takes one minute to recover that cell, all right, to get my ATP back to full. So I cannot sprint all day, because then my muscles become so full of toxins, hormones, and lactic acid that the oxygen level doesn't get into my muscles, which means the fatigue level sets in, all right? So what coaches can do and what players can do is learn how to breathe. So there's two types of, of, of breathing. So um, I'll just say the triple four, all right? So, four, so you're going to breathe in through your nose for four seconds. You're going to hold for four seconds, and you're going to breathe out like Dark Vader, like Star Trek. <laughs> oh, all right? That sound is important because you, you, you're exhaling from the belly, not from the top chest. When we get stressed, we have a shallow breath. We go... <sighs> When we belly breathe and get all that toxins and all that energy out, and we're breathing in fresh, fresh, fresh oxygen, all right? Now, we think about your lungs that have all these little branches and wanting to absorb that oxygen, and then it pushes it into your bloodstream. It allows for recovery. Half time, you do the four, seven, eight uh, rule, all right? So, four seconds in through your nose, seven seconds hold, eight seconds breathe out. You're breathing out every last bit. That is proven. All right, to decrease anxiety, decrease stress, and improve your oxygen levels. What do you need half time? You need a mindset change because you're either one nil down or you're not having a great day. So that mindset changes. These things doesn't cost you a cent, mm -hmm. but it can have the maximum importance um, to your performance on the day. And then I practice this every day. So I'm in the car, you know, on the way to this 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 talk. I'm breathing <laughs> four seconds in. <laughs> Seven, Don't wear the art, oh. <laughs> all right? And then all of a sudden, my clarity and thought and focus, because I've got more oxygen, is far superior. So that one technique or two techniques that you can do at home can have a massive improvement to your game and your performance. Okay, that's a good one. Easy to remember, 478. You want to add to that, say what? What I'm actually hearing from him is that there's a routine yeah. that is needed. Yeah. You know, it's not just, a, a, you, you don't just wake up and, and, and do it. There's a routine that is needed, that is continuous for a lengthy period of time, mm. uh, that you have to carry on. Which, which just and that talks yeah. to discipline. Discipline. You need to be disciplined yeah. to make sure that you keep that routine. And as we wrap up now, Siva, I'm so glad that we have you here, and we have the girls, of course, here with us today <laughs> because I'm from an era where 
there was not a lot of emphasis on boys needing to cook their own food you know you always felt like there was always somebody that's mm -hmm. there to cook for you that's gonna make your food for you but as you get older you start to realize actually the importance of being able to make your own food and um, why is that important and maybe if we can talk to the boys that obviously also maybe are told that no you don't have to cook it's a woman's job and especially now with you talking about specific kinds of food and what to put in your body i'm sure being able to make your own food is also very crucial i think it's very crucial that boys learn to cook their own food <laughs> it's 2020 <laughs> uh you know it's 2020 i think also from a sportsmanship perspective i really think it's important that uh, young men um learn how to cook simply because um it gives you control over what you eat you know exactly what it is that you are cooking what that you're cooking can i just be, uh, be honest with you it's so easy if you have the passion and the desire to earn or just a little bit of interest to cook a steak for instance it takes about 10 minutes depending on how thick it is so you need a hot skillet a hot pan make sure that it's nice and hot a little bit of oil you can just brush a little bit of oil it sits on the one you can season it, it sits on the one side i mean not doing anything you're just watching it yeah but it doesn't burn it, it doesn't burn and then you on the other side and then you've got you know you've got your protein you know and then when it comes to um um um, um vegetables let's say you're having um a baked potatoes or or sweet potatoes or whatever you take you cut your, your your potatoes in sections a little bit of seasoning or some spice to it goes in the oven they it's it's i can't explain it enough it is so easy to cook but you must have the interest to know what to do and how to do it and also the interest to also watch it because you can't just cook and then just leave it or yeah. leave it because it would have burnt and that becomes a waste um but not only that every sportsman i know that are my friends or that are within my circle they cook for themselves i've got a friend who does weights mm. and we call um his diet a, a rubber chicken diet because <laughs> he eats chicken that has been steamed uh, for breakfast, lunch, and uh, supper, or obviously with different vegetables. Um, and he is so routinous about his diet, especially when he has to train. He's got like a specific diet. Now, it's not appealing to me at all. I'm mm. like, uh, Richard, can I just add a little bit of something mm. there? You know? it's, we call it drop a chicken because it's steamed. It's th there's nothing um, to it, you know. But but what, what what's lovely about Richard is the fact that he has taken... The, the, the lead or control in, in terms of his diet and what he puts in because he uses food as a tool to equip, not just food to be full. So it's a tool to equip you in order for you to be strong for uh, for um, for your for your sports. So I mean it, it's it's really crucial and, and what's nice now is that food is the new fashion. I mean, if you if you can cook, it's like you you impressed so many people Ooh. already. You are able to impress, you know, from a social perspective. If you can cook as a man, it's it's like oh wow, really, you know. There's a lot of interest in men who can cook nowadays, and the and, and information is galore. You can watch Messibelishes. You can watch you know so many other chefs. That we've got so many budding and older chefs who are, who, who are cooking. So there's so much information, and what's nice is that you don't have to watch tv for it you can it's everything's mm. instant it's what it's on our phone you can do a recipe and decide this is what i'm going to eat tonight and then uh, customize it according to your own diet and also if you've got a a, a nutritionist or a dietitian let's say you uh, when you when you are trained and sean will probably speak to this um is you need uh, you know they'll give you a diet to follow mm. so if if you can't then cook the food who's gonna cook it yeah. you know um so it helps you in that and what's nice is that if for instance there's certain food where you 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 don't eat uh, your, your diet doesn't allow you can you can then look at the menu and see the little written stuff under under the heading of whatever you want to order and know exactly that okay this is not for me okay so it opens your mind to making better decisions that's a very good one boys take control of what goes in your body Take control of your destination. Take control of your journey. Um, the days of a woman's places in the kitchen and somebody's going to cook for you are long gone. But not only that, for your own career, for your own sake, 
it's important to know and understand what you're putting in in your body so there you have it you can watch a Sivas TV show there if you want to learn the basics of how to cook. But I think it's a very important tool. Because when you leave your school or where you are right now, you move to a professional club, they put you in the digs there, you're on your own there. You can't expect people to cook for you all the time. So it's a nice skill to have and you'll be able to cook and you'll be very popular amongst your team there just for your cooking skills alone. And um, Sean, as we wrap up now, is there maybe any other aspect that you want to touch on when it comes to what you guys do as ASP? Sure. Um... I think just the other thing that athletes need to look at is ice baths, all right? So we, we've got a professional grade system, which we, we travel around the country with, but you can put a check, you can water in a checkers packet, put it into your deep freeze, and after your training session, put it into your bath, and have, or just put it on your legs in different areas. So those simple things that you could do will help, all right? Why is ice important? It helps reduce inflammation, it reduces endorphins, which is the happy drug, I feel good, desensitizes the pain so tomorrow I'm not as sore which means I can push harder again there's so many health benefits to to ice bath or cold therapy that it should be part of your routine it should be part of your daily discipline because it's going to keep you in the game for longer my hope and the reason why I started ASP is my hope is that we can instill tools to athletes to give them a long a long career all right and if they stop at 35 playing football they'll still have a healthy career in fitness and still moving because their joints and pains are not as bad as opposed to you know shot knees and you know tears and yeah. stuff like that and a perfect example is actually Dane Clake, one of our ambassadors for this Engine Knocker Challenge. I'm sure you've seen him as part of these uh, locker room uh, sessions. If you haven't seen him, make sure you catch that episode because he looks like he can still play today. And he's been playing professional football for so many years, over 16 years, uh, Dane Clake. But he looks like he can get on the field of play because he's looked after his body very well. So as I mentioned, there's always a catch. There are prizes and uh, stuff to be given away. And there was a reason why I asked Siva about why it's important for us boys and girls, by the way, to learn how to cook because Siva has some goodies for us that will help us in starting our journey to cooking. Your journey starts here. We say that for a reason. Siva, what do you have for us? I believe you've got seeds. Yes, I thought, um, you know, because we, 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 we tend to say that it's expensive to go, uh, you know, to live a healthy life, to buy vegetables, etc. The best thing to do is to make your own. Know. And by making your own, it is to plant your own. I grew up in a home where my mother did the garden and my dad actually, and we grew our own vegetables right in our backyard. And I also do that with my children mm. in, in my house. It's a very easy way for you to have access to healthy food in an instant without having to pay for it. All you need is just the seeds and obviously, which is part of discipline, it's the watering. Mm. <laughs> it's the watering, you know, it's got the manure, it's got instructions of how to uh, how to plant it um, and all of that. And it is, you know, it, it, it's, it, it's, it's to say that, you know, take it seriously uh, on your part and, you know, Engine, uh, uh, MSC and everybody is doing their best to make sure that they they put this young young women and these men uh, 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 on the right path, but obviously you have to take the interest in doing these things. Yeah. So I thought so, let me. So which kind of seeds do you have for us? Oh, it's a lot. Oh, is it a secret? Actually, it's a it's a it's a secret. Do they have to like look after it and see when it grows what it is that they're growing? Uh, no, actually, it has a pack. Okay. There is a pack. Each one has a pack, and it will tell you um, which one it is. Okay. So depending what it is that they get. Um, and also perhaps we, what we can do is we can um, tell them what we have and then people can choose from there. But don't That's say fine. you're going to use it if you're not going to use it because you're wasting. Yes, and it's fast as fingers <laughs> first. So please send us, if you're interested, start typing right now and let us know that you want these seeds and you want to grow your own vegetables. And whoever um, beats anybody to it, whoever is fastest fingers first, you'll get those uh, seeds. And it's all about passion. Remember, Seba said it's about passion. You have to be passionate about it. You have to want to do it. So if you really want to do it, guys, let's not waste uh, the seeds. And girls, let's make sure that we just uh, sh uh, just let us know if you want the seeds and we'll make sure that you get the seeds. And we're going to follow back. Or you can take little videos of yourself. You can take pictures as they grow along. And I'm sure you'll be very excited to see it come into fruition. Fruition, excuse the pun. Oh. But you will be very happy <laughs> um, when, it, when it really comes alive. So, so there's a reason for all of this. Sean, you're also not getting left behind because you've also got something for us. Yes. What so can we look forward to? A lifelong... <laughs> Ice bath session. <laughs> yes, you get free ice bars for life. <laughs> no, so we, we're giving away um, 
for the boys and girls of winning the, the competition, a three month high performance and recovery um, program. Um, so you will have access to myself and my team and the same way on a private level that we take these athletes to that next level, we will guarantee that through a home assessment process that we will get in every metric that we've assessed the athletes to an acceptable level and high performance level. So we know that upper body will be at this level, we know that core at this level. All we, all we need from you is that dedication to want to do it and following the routine and ask a lot of questions and we'll get you where you need to be. So that's the, the price. It's a great opportunity, guys. Don't miss it because when we speak to these former players, well, current players, Bongani Kumalo, Dane Clayton, a former player, Renelo Litsolonyane, a current player, they always say that they wish they had these sessions yeah. when they were young and they wish they were equipped with these tools and with these life skills and with all this information. So don't take it for granted. It is very important. And please, when you are growing your seeds, Make sure you post them on social media. Tag us at engine.sa on Instagram, engine underscore SA on Twitter, engine soccer on uh, Facebook. Also, tag us, take us through the process and let's see how beautiful it is and how it looks. And use our hashtags also, engine uh, also play a part, uh, play it forward. Those are some of the hashtags that we will be using. But I think it was a very beneficial session. Also, for me, I've learned a lot today about food and about calciums and about glissy. What is it? Okay. Glycemic that, index. Glycemic <laughs> index. And I hope you know how to spell carbohydrates, guys. But let's thank you to our guest, Sean van Staden there from ASP. Thank you very much for your insight today. Sibam Tonga, a food scientist and nutritionist, the owner of the Siba Co. Thank you very much. And uh, we're going to watch you on TV. When are you on TV? When is your show on? Or how can we find more information? So my show is on Food Network. Um, it is on different times uh, of the day. But find me on social media. I'm very active on my social platforms if you want to follow me on a regular basis at Sibam Tongana. Uh, yeah, that's my handle, Sibam Tongana. I'm mostly active on uh, Instagram. Okay. I live on Instagram. I've got a house there. Okay, <laughs> just like the rest of you there. I know that you're big on Instagram. And Sean, how do we follow you if you want more information? As ASP, where do we find you guys? So our tag is very simple Instagram. Um, uh, Facebook, it's ASP Sports, uh, ASP South Africa. Um, and we can we post regular updates on on how to um, how to improve, how to recover, how to uh, you know take your step to the next level. Um, so yeah, all social media networks there. Okay, great stuff, guys. There we have it. And remember, your talent is only twenty percent of it. The other eighty percent is made up of all the sessions that Engine is bringing you through these webinars and through these local rooms. So that's why it's important uh, that we still keep you informed, even though we can't be on the field of play this year. But we'll be back, hopefully, on the field of play in 2021, and I look forward to seeing all of you then. Enjoy the rest of the day. Let's take the questions now, and we'll answer immediately.